Uranium is the heaviest element in the solar system. It's so heavy that it is unstable. And with time, it will fall apart. It will decay into smaller, more stable elements, notably lead and helium. And this process of decay happens at known rates, forming the basis of two geological clocks. We can measure the ratio of lead to uranium and of helium to uranium with an instrument called a mass spectrometer and we've got three of those installed here at the London Geochronology Centre. Now the lead to uranium ratio tells us when the uranium bearing mineral and the rock in which it is contained crystallised. The helium clock tells us something very different about a rock because helium is a gas, it's the second smallest element on the periodic table which was incidentally discovered here at UCL by William Ramsey uh, more than a century ago. Now helium is a gas and at high temperatures it's not, sitting, not happy sitting in the crystal lattice of a uranium bearing mineral so it will escape. It's only when the rock cools below the so-called closure temperature that the helium gets locked in and that the clock starts ticking. Now for appetite calcium phosphate which is our our main uh, phase of interest for the helium clock, this temperature is about 60-70 degrees, which corresponds to a depth in the crust of 2 to 3 kilometers. So a helium age doesn't tell us when the rock crystallized, but when it passed through this 2 to 3 kilometer depth interval. So if you measure the helium age of the summit of Mount Everest, you will get an older age than the base of Mount Everest, because the summit has cooled before the base. And the age difference tells us how rapidly Mount Everest uh, has risen. This is called thermochronology. So we've seen the uranium lead and the uranium helium clock. There's actually a third clock related to uh, uranium and that is based on the decay of uranium not to lead and helium but uh, by means of a completely di different decay mechanism because for every two million uranium atoms that decay to lead and helium one uranium atom, on average, will undergo a different decay mechanism. It will undergo spontaneous fission into two particles of roughly equal size, releasing a lot of energy. This forms the basis of the atom bomb and nuclear energy. It also forms the basis of another geological clock because this spontaneous fission releases a lot of energy and damages the crystal lattice of the host mineral. Now we can reveal these damaged tracks, these fission tracks, by etching the crystal with acid and then we can count the tracks not using a mass spectrometer but using a microscope or you could alternatively use a computer to do that because together with my colleague Jen Ping He from King's College I've developed an app called Geochron at Home which uh, you can use to count fishing tracks from the comfort of your own home or on the train using your smartphone or a tablet computer so please join the uh, crowdsourcing efforts in geochronology and give the app a try. Thank you.